Matthew 19, 26 says, with God, all things are possible. So how many of you agree with me today that we are going to defeat, conquer, and overcome some giants in our lives in Jesus' name? You guys, hey, I'm Amy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Thank you so much for tuning in. I am actually sharing my podcast. It's called The Warrior Up Podcast with Amy Smith. Today, we're going to be sharing and talking with Dave and Ashley Willis. It's episode 76. So there are 75 other episodes wherever you listen to your podcast. That's where you can find them. Today, I'm actually posting the first one video-wise on this channel. You guys work out with me too on this channel. Free workouts every week. We worship Jesus together with our workout because God cares about every part of our lives and he wants us to be well. So check that out. Also, I wanna let you know I have a new book that's coming out. I'm so excited about this. It takes a lot to write a book. Anybody know about that? But when God gives you a vision and he gives you a word for his beloved daughters, you hold the treasure in your heart and you pray a lot and you share what God has taught you over almost three decades of fitness his way. So that comes out soon. If you'd like to know more about that, please be sure to check the description or grow, go to crosstrain180.com and you can pre-order your book. All right, so today I have Dave and Ashley Willis on the show. I have my husband, Tim, he's joining us too and he's so much fun, oh my goodness. He doesn't say a lot, but whenever he does talk, it's hysterical. A um, little embarrassed about it, but not really. No, it's a lot of fun. So anyway, Naked and Healthy is the book that my uh, guest wrote it is available wherever you get your books. You can um, order it off of Amazon. Dave and Ashley are absolutely amazing. They're, they are so much fun. We had the best conversation. We talk about Jesus, fitness, marriage, and then other stuff too. We had just this awesome conversation about what marriage looks like, what about health looks like, how it's a sensitive subject, but God wants us to be well. It's a lifestyle and we can change our perspective about what healthy looks like. So if you don't know Dave and Ashley, they have reached so many people. They reach millions of people every year through their EXO marriage conferences, through their Naked Marriage podcast, through the books that they write, and so much more. You can follow them on social media too. You're absolutely going to love them. And I cannot wait to start this conversation. But first, let me say again, thank you so much for listening. If you guys would please share this podcast with people that you know or sisters that you know that could use a little bit of encouragement in the Lord. And we all want to be healthy and well. So we need each other. We are better together. You want to get with the right tribe. So join my warrior women for Jesus tribe at crosstrain180.com or reach out to me. And I would love to connect with you and tell you more about some of the things that I do. But other than that, the Warrior Up podcast has been such a blessing. I started it, so it was a little over a year and a half ago, it was a few weeks right before my mom passed away, so it was a really hard time, but God knew what I needed. It's been healing, and it's also been very powerful to be able to share some of the things that God has taught me. Throughout the journey, I've had Pastor Matthew Barnett on the podcast, one of my heroes of the faith. My husband and I are heroes of the faith. We love Pastor Matthew and Pastor Caroline. We've had him on the episode. Ken Jocelyn's a friend, a motivator, had, have had him. You've got to listen to that episode. Daniel Gomez is an awesome motivator and a friend in the Lord. That was a great conversation. I've had Laureen Trujillo. She wrote Festival in the Desert. That's an op awesome episode. My friend Marty Meyer, who was a powerhouse preacher. That girl can preach. The one episode that we talked about the love of God. I was in tears. Then my friend, Gina Berkmeyer, she is amazing. She's an author and a speaker, an award-winning author. And she wrote the book, um, Generations Deep, absolutely life-changing. So other than that, you're going to hear a lot from me every week, but I'm passionate for God and I'm passionate to see you fit body, mind, and spirit on purpose for a purpose. So without anything else said, you guys reach out to me if you, I, I would love to connect. Let's start this podcast episode. Here we go with Dave and Ashley and my husband, Tim. Dave and Ashley, welcome to the Warrior Up podcast. Oh my goodness, it's such a blessing to have you both here. I also have Tim. Hi. <laughs> Thank you guys so much for being a part of the episode today. I cannot wait to hear what God has in store for, for us all. Us too, oh, yeah. Yes, Thanks, Tim pleasure. and Amy, for having us. It's, uh, it's good to see you both again. 
It is. Yeah, it is so. our blessing. Okay. So why don't you guys share? I think most people know who you are. You guys are pretty amazing. Um, you are marriage couple uh, leaders and you have an, an awesome way of articulating real stuff like uh, your, oh, excuse me, uh, your naked um, podcast, your naked marriage podcast, your naked and healthy book. Would you guys just expound on that a little bit of what you do and, and how you got started too? Well, sure. You know, we've been in marriage ministry for almost 11 years and we've been with EXO about seven years, but we, you know, started out really just uh, in youth ministry. Eventually Dave became a pastor, um, a teaching pastor. And many years ago, he was noticing that when people would come to him for pastoral counseling, it really centered around marriage and relationships. And I remember he came home one day and this is right when Facebook was kind of the wild west. And he said, you know, somebody really should take more advantage of Facebook and like put good biblical marriage advice on there. He's like, so many people are struggling in their marriages. And he said in that moment, you know, he felt like God was saying, well, you're, you're somebody, so why not start it? And so Dave started this anonymous page. I mean, it didn't have our pictures on it or our names. It was just called marriage. It's Facebook uh, forward slash stronger marriages still exists today. And um, it just, it just really, it didn't do a whole lot for a little bit, you know, just put good advice on there. But then it started gaining a lot of traction and it wasn't because of anything we were doing, but it's because people are so desperate for good, solid marriage advice. And, um, and we just started forming this, this uh, audience and, and, you know, learning from each other, learning about marriage. And then that led to us writing more resources. And I started doing more at the time I had had a little one at home. And then they were like, Dave, you know, why don't you get your wife to do some things? Cause eventually we did put our names on it, but, um, they, you know, wanted to hear from a couple. And so we started blogging, we started uh, getting invitations to speak and eventually joining the team at EXO Marriage. And now we write books and we um, go around the country speaking at different conferences and we work with the couples at our church at, as well. And we just, we really enjoy it. It's not something we set out to do, but we feel like it's our calling and it, and there, it takes many of us because marriage is one of the highest felt needs that people go through and have in their life. And uh, we just want to be part of, of helping couples and families. Well, Tim and I were blessed to go. I was it in 22. Um, we went to an EXO conference and first yes. of all, we met you guys. I think it was, let me see, cause you guys signed my book that you gave me. Um, so that was October of, um, 2021. Yes. And that's where we met you guys. And, um, that's where EXO was recording a fitness series. Mm -hmm. And I was absolutely, I mean, God opened up that door, for us to be a part of that ministry. Oh my goodness. I, um, now that we're in kind of a waiting period, God will remind me of all these wonderful people that we've met, like you guys, and just the things that we've been able to be a part of. And it gives you hope. But, um, I mean, from the time that we met you, we just fell in love with you guys. Like, okay, we could be buds with them. You guys are so real and authentic. You genuinely, genuinely love people. You see that you guys love each other and it flows from this authenticity from both of you and it's magnetic. And so, um, but when we went to the conference, you guys have such an amazing way of making things fun. Like you talk about the raw things, like <laughs> you talk you. about sex and you talk about, um, you know, how do you make time for a quickie in the afternoon or, you know, and it, it wasn't anything weird because some people think, well, in church, you're not supposed to be that blunt or you're not supposed to be that real, but as, but God created marriage. Exactly. So yeah. It's the most beautiful thing. Whenever we realize it's supposed to be fun, marriage is supposed to be fun in all aspects and intimacy um, really resembles what we're supposed to have with Jesus. So can you guys just share a little bit about how, or do you guys ever feel weird about sharing some of the things that you do? How do you do it so candidly? <laughs> well, I think our kids and our parents feel weirder than we do about <laughs> what we do. Um, but we, we love getting to do it. I mean, I think maybe it was a little more awkward at first, but we quickly realized that there was such a need for, especially among Christians, to have just a safe place to have real conversations. And a lot of us grew up in settings, maybe in homes or in churches where you know sex wasn't talked about in a, in a healthy way. It was either talked about only as something negative that you shouldn't do until you're married. But then once you are married, there's, there's no help at all. There's no conversation about it. And so, you know, folks write us and they'll say, man, this is your podcast or this ministry is the first place 
in my life, I felt like I've, I've had the freedom to really ask real questions about sex, have real conversations related to sex. And we're just trying to remind people that God's the one who gives us that freedom. I mean, it's not anything we're doing. We're just we're just opening up scripture and reminding ourselves and others that like, guys, listen, God made sex. It's his idea. It's a great gift. The world doesn't own it. The devil doesn't own it. God made it. And Christian married couples should be having the best sex on the planet because we're the ones doing it his God's way. And so um, I know that it's a, it's a complicated issue sometimes because we live in a complicated world where there are a lot of counterfeits out there like pornography. And there are a lot of a lot of different forms of baggage that people carry into marriage related to sex from their own from their own mindsets, their own insecurities, their own maybe past poor choices and, and even you know, the tragic cases of, of people carrying the baggage of past abuse related to sex that they've endured. And we just try to be a safe place for people to unpack all of that and get back to the the truth of the beautiful truth of what God created sex to be and to to redeem that and to reclaim that and remind couples that this is a gift that God has for you. And so we we enjoy getting to be part of that conversation. And um, it's fun. It's fun. Yeah. And you guys make it fun. We had some, <laughs> you. you have everybody in that. I mean, there were a couple thousand people or more, and everyone is having the best time. And <laughs> that's the goal. You, that's you guys the goal. are truly so gifted. So I just want to put a plug out there for all my listeners. You have to check out their the Naked Marriage podcast. Please Thank check you. it out. So yeah, Thank one you. thing that you said, um, and this is a great segue into your book, Naked and Healthy, because you said how sex is God's idea. Mm -hmm. that okay so I'm going to just transition that a little bit I always say exercise is God's idea taking care yeah. of the temple and being healthy is not man's idea it's not um the enemy has per perverted it where it's supposed to be about you know how we look or looking uh sexy which I you know I'm just I don't even um think that way but I'm just being real. That's what people think. Well, I want to look that way in a swimsuit or, you know, I want to look great on vacation. There's nothing wrong with wanting to look good, um, but our motives matter. But it's God's idea that we take care of the temple. So, yeah, yeah. Will you guys share a little bit about your book, Naked and Healthy? Sure. Uh, we love that book. So like our first, uh, I mean, we've written many books together, but really our first book that I feel like really encompassed our whole message of our hearts is the naked marriage book and then we were thinking about well we want to do a follow-up book to this that expands on what the naked marriage is and just in a nutshell the naked marriage um it does refer to being naked physically which is awesome but really it's talking about adam and eve the first married couple and how god created them and they were naked and unashamed meaning they weren't ashamed of their bodies. They weren't ashamed of having any secrets. They didn't have anything that they were holding back from each other. And we know it didn't stay that way. We know that Satan comes in and and um, as a serpent and tells them to doubt God. And they eventually listen to him over God. And and we see their eyes open to, to seeing their naked and there's shame attached to it. And there's shame even attached to sex. I mean, that's where we first see shame enter the picture. And so, you know, we believe that God can help us all reclaim that naked marriage by being open, honest, and transparent and also, and this is the message of Naked and Healthy, he wants us to be healthy spiritually, mentally, and emotionally, and um, and physically. And so we want to make sure that we're hitting all those things because, uh, you know, one of the messages in the book is your marriage is only as healthy as you are individually, because we all need to be taking responsibility for our individual health in all those aspects. And so what we do in Naked, Naked and Healthy is walk through, well, how does that practically look? And we don't come at people as experts because we certainly have messed up a lot. We share a lot of our, a lot of our trial and error and our failures and a lot of funny stories in there too, because I know, you know, whenever I remember when we were delivering this talk about naked and healthy, I would mention, you know, physical health. And I know Amy, that's your expertise, but you could literally feel people seize up a little bit. Some people would perch up like, yes, my wheelhouse I've always been an athlete. I've always, you know, I'm a trainer. I do all this stuff. I'm good at this. But a lot of people in the audience, literally, you could almost hear the oxygen being sucked out of the air. And what it taught us is like, it's just such a sensitive area for people. And sometimes it's because they feel like their body is fighting against them. Like literally they're like, I am trying, but my body is not cooperating. I have, you know, a diagnosis or just some kind of impediment that's holding me back. And, um, and, and sometimes too, even when it comes to physical health, there's a mental block. 
you know, or a spiritual block. Like, and, and what we talk about is really all these things affect the other. And so yes. we need to aim for being well-rounded in, in all these areas and also realize as married people that we can actually help our spouse grow in these areas too. Like, yes, we have our individual responsibility, but we also, we can either be a hindrance or a help to our spouse in these areas as well. And so we talk through how to do that. That is so good. Okay. So one of the things you talk about in the book as well is anxiety and depression, which I have a long family line of that. And I, and Tim and I both can be very anxious people. So, I mean, pray for our kids. Okay. (laughs) Uh, But I honestly, my exercise journey is because God healed my mind. Yes. It was not about the physical for me. My mind Mm -hmm. was so messed up from a lot of trauma from my childhood and then my own wrong thinking, my own perfectionism and God did a healing in me and I found, okay, I am a happier person. I am closer to God. I can get out of my own way so I can hear from Jesus. I am a better mom. I'm a better wife when I take care of me. So, I mean, back at 19 years old, because Tim and I got married young, I was 19 Mm -hmm. And again, a lot of baggage. And so I knew I could not repeat the things on my family that I felt were done to me, you know, how the enemy, and I'm not going back to blame because God has done such a work um, of healing. Uh, Mm -hmm. But those things were so real to me. And so exercise became, this is a tool. God has given me this tool and the enemy does. He wants to defeat women and men and make them feel like they don't measure up if their bodies don't look like someone else. And that is such a lie from the enemy because taking care of our temples is really a gift, not only to ourselves, but to God and the ones that we love, we show up better. Like this morning, I got up at four 30, um, which I have been, uh, several times a week to, with my fit campers, we do an online workout, but this morning I, you know, I could have slept in, right. I could have slept in, but I felt like, who do I want to show up to today it's all god's grace it's not i'm not boasting i i pray that never comes across that way but you know it's waking up like what do i want to show up what kind of amy do i want to show up as one that's kind of tired or do i want to start the day run my race with joy you know (laughs) i find exercise is such a gift to me of healing in my mind because i get in my own way so have you guys found that too in in your marriage just taking care of the temple has affected your marriage and made it so much more special and blessed yeah Uh, yeah yeah i mean we're yeah we, we are not like elite athletes by any stretch but <laughs> we love <laughs> we love no, I'm being... laughing cuz i um you know it's so easy cuz we live in this instagram world where you can i mean you know i've been doing this for a long time but still the enemy can get in your head and go oh my goodness i work out that hard and i don't look anything like that you know <laughs> yeah. my body's like yeah. the hormonal imbalances and things are happening to my hips that i don't i didn't ask for you know yes, um, yes. but how fast the enemy you know can come and just kind of steal that joy but i just wanted to say no we're not uh, looking at ourselves as <laughs> <laughs> no no you, no you get you guys are, are pros we're but we we do love exercise. We, we love, um, I didn't always by any stretch, but like you've, like you said, it's a gift. Once you realize it's a, it's a gift, it's not like a punishment for, you know, something you ate the day before, but it's a gift and a celebration of what God made our bodies to be able to do. And they are the temple, his temple, temple of the Holy spirit. And so you want to take care of the temple, like you said earlier. And, and really, I think we've just found like, as we get out in, into sunlight, as we move our bodies, as we, um, push ourselves a little bit physically. Yeah. It helps us to be at our best, like the whole rest of the day. I mean, it helps us to, to have mental clarity. It Mm -hmm. helps us with our attitudes. It it helps you with our overall health and making sure that we have, you know, the energy and longevity that God created us to have to do all the things that he's created us to do. And so I think, I think we breaking out of that mindset of like exercise is somehow like a punishment that I have to, I have to punish myself to do and instead to say, no, this is a gift. This is something I get to do. I mean, there are so many folks who've, who've lost mobility for whatever reason that would give anything to be able to, to exercise and to push themselves and, and to sweat. And, um, and so when you see it as a gift, it, it does kind of flip the script a little bit. And, and so we, 
we got a basic home gym during COVID. Yeah, um, COVID. Because like the yeah. you know gyms were closed and we couldn't go places, and so we got a basic setup. And my teenage sons, um, they got into lifting, and and that became something that that we could kind of cheer each other on and share together. And um, and now like you know gyms of course have been open for a long time, but I still mostly just work out at home or, mm-hmm. or go walk or run outside. And, um, you know, I enjoy, but I think everyone has to find a rhythm that works, works for them. Mm-hmm. And, well, and I'll say, and it doesn't have to be the same as a married couple because Dave's much more a morning person. He's more like you, Amy, even if he is like, I don't think he's always, you're not always like, yeah, I get to wake up, but you, you feel, you know, you feel better when you wake yeah, up earlier yeah. and you hit the gym and you go on that run and, um, on mornings where he can't do that, he can feel it. And so like, as, as his wife, who knows that my husband's going to come back to me better, if he can get that run in, I'll try to go out of my way to give him that time and space. And he does the same for me, but I'm a nighttime work per, like workout person. As far as my toning, I'll go walk during the day and get in the sunlight. I love to be outside if I can, if it's a rainy day, you know, I can go on like a treadmill or something, but I really prefer being outside. But at night is when I like Dave will be literally asleep. And I have my weights and I'm doing like my Pilates and stuff in front of the TV. Like, so I think we have to find that it's okay if it looks different for each of us. Like there's some things we can do together, like pickleball is all the rage today. That's a great thing that a lot of couples are discovering they like together or running or whatever. I tried running for a season. I really was proud of myself. I trained for a 5k. I realized running is not my favorite, but, but did I it. did it. You did it. He's so. a marathoner. He's done marathons. Well, one time, and, so, and it was ugly and painful, and it will not well, happen again. you did it again. twice. You finished once, but it, yeah, he had yeah. an injury the I'm first not time. built for that kind of distance. <laughs> so you did a full? He did a full? He did a full. He did. He, did. That's, yeah. and he was That's amazing. That's pretty impressive. Yeah. Well, I think so, too, because it, I could never do I mean, I, I won't say never, because I know if I had the training and mindset, I could do it. Yeah. I've never felt the desire. I've not. I felt like. I wanted, um, I, I really got into Pilates last year and I'm a trained dancer. Like my whole life I've done ballet and tap and jazz and dancing. And so Pilates for me, it felt like I was tapping more into that dance part of me and Pilates challenged me. So there were certain moves where when I started Pilates, I couldn't do it. Um, you know, core, when you've had four kids can really get affected, but over time I was able to do it. And just the other day I had a hysterectomy in January and I just got the clearance last week that I can do ab work again. And I was doing my Pilates moves and I was like, can I do these certain things? And I could, and I I can't tell you when you set goals and then you're able to do that, to either get back to it or set a new goal. It's so motivating. And it does, it does something for you mentally too. Mm -hmm. And, um, and then, and then it's kind of an outpouring in how you treat others too, because how we see ourselves and how we respect our bodies and um, put in that time, like you said, even it, it can affect our mental and emotional health. So it's, it's really important. And I know, you know, Dave's got a thyroid disorder as well that he was diagnosed with um, years ago. And I mean, if you didn't invest in your physical health, it would affect, I mean, it, cause it was kind of this snowball effect that affected so much of your yeah. life. Yeah. So, I mean, but it's helped I'm being thankful physically to healthy. be, you know, just to be able to be, to be active. And I think everybody feels better when they're, when they're active, it's a gift to yourself to do it. So it is. A so you gift. start small, you know, you don't have to, Again, look at Instagram and think, well, I'm not I'm not going to be able to bench press 400 pounds, so I'm not going to lift anything or I'm not going to be able to, you know, run a, an Ironman triathlon. So why start anywhere? It's like, no, you don't have to do those things, but you get get a little bit stronger than you are right now. Get a little bit right. Start somewhere and you'll, you'll feel better for it. Yes. I love that. So that's one of the things I say too, you know, just, just show up, just do Mm -hmm. something, even if it's five minutes, uh, there are so many, um, health benefits to just even five minutes of getting our heart rate elevated, Mm -hmm. um, exercise by getting our heart rates up through exercise. There's certain parts of our brain that actually we get oxygenated blood to that we wouldn't any other way. Wow. I mean, yeah. God knows what he's doing, right? Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. I, I mean, I just find the extra with my mom. Um, she passed, went to heaven a little bit over a year ago. And so towards the end of her life, dementia and Alzheimer's. And uh, so it's so important to me too, um, to take care of my mental health and to exercise yes. for the longevity, you know, um, because when we stop moving, we start dying inside because right. God made yeah. us to move. Mm-hmm. So Tim, do you have anything? Are you anything coming yeah, to you what do you like doing tim i i enjoy uh in and out burger oh hey <laughs> we like oh, that too <laughs> sorry i'm just kidding i do i do love it um 
I, I think with yeah, I guess I'm sure not. I was just gonna say you're never. No, no, I, I love eating way more than I love exercise. Yes. That's I will say when you, you know when you exercise, like for me, I don't I'm not she isn't a way better, like happier when she gets her workout in. So I yes. completely agree with that. I love it when she gets her workout in. And I need to be better at that. And so she does motivate and push me to do that, which is great. And I will say that, you know, when like as a man, uh, when you exercise and you, you know, you lose some weight and you feel a little bit better about yourself, you're more confident in the bedroom to have the sex. So you're not like ashamed. And I do, I do know that's motivation. And also mm -hmm. this from studies, uh, every 20 pounds a man loses, he gains an inch of his penis. <laughs> let that's me tell true. you i'm going on a diet if that's true yeah, I, man would I didn't lose like, 40 they're, more they're pounds going running now. <laughs> yeah. is that really can true i i, 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 think I, I love it that. is that not i cannot say that on here i'm sorry i say things i think that's that. hilarious no I think, that I is think hilarious like like <laughs> optically it appears that way baby like that it just in terms of <laughs> scale <laughs> you can see it better when you there you go, there you go. You can see i am better. laughing so hard because i am a literal thinker so i'm just yeah like, like, you're doing the minute. math what? wait a second yeah. so, oh so boy 60 pounds yeah okay well there you go there you go um okay so what now that's hard to transition to this question but <laughs> what do you do what do you do if your spouse um, is struggling in their body and with their self-esteem? How can we build up our spouse? What do you guys tell couples? I love how you talk about this. Why don't you go ahead, sweetie? And you help me in this way. Right. Well, I mean, so I think many times. first off, you have to you have to be really gentle in how you motivate a spouse yeah. toward their own health because it can it can never come across as you're not attracted to them as they currently are that you, you don't accept them and love them and adore them as they are. They have to know that you love them and are attracted to them and, and desire them just as they are. Mm -hmm. And, but you want both of, both of you to be at your best physically so that you can have health for the long term and all that. And whatever shape they're in at that moment, like, you know, like celebrate that, like let that, I always tell guys like, that's your type. You know, if your wife's petite, then you're, you're, ty you're into petite. If your wife <laughs> is more full, full figured then you are you are into full figured like you know she is your type what in whatever shape she is at the moment and so never make your wife feel like she's got to compete or fit into some specific mold of what and same for wives with their husbands yeah and, I mean, and obviously yeah. same same both ways yeah. i think that that the the societal pressure tends to fall more um you know unfairly mm -hmm. on on women than men mm -hmm. but it goes both ways you know obviously you know we need to we need to Wives need to build their husbands up, let the, him know you desire him. You think he's the man that you are drawn to him um, at just exactly as he is. But also that, that both of you mm -hmm. try to encourage, encourage health in each other. But right. you just have to be really sensitive in how you encourage, because if it comes across as you're trying to fix them or you're trying to, you know, manipulate or trying, trying to get them to do certain things to become what you want them to be. Uh, then that could backfire. Or even like looking like someone else. I mean, we've talked to couples where, uh, and in fact, uh, you know, we did a podcast with some couple, a couple that I won't name them because I think this was actually not recorded, but it was really insightful. Like they're professionals in, in, in an industry that is related to fitness. And they shared with us that that is that one thing about pressuring each other to kind of fit a certain mold has come up time and time and time again, because in their industry too, they're around all these other people who they're same thing. It's their industry. It's like looking a certain way is part of their job. And they said they realized they like, they came to a crossroads where they were like, you know, we have to, we, we have to realize our relationship is more important and we can't keep comparing ourselves or each other to these other people because it becomes the thing that is always leading to a fight. And especially when your body's changed, like when you're, whether you're aging or you get pregnant and you're navigating your body changing through pregnancy, um, that, that'll or throw menopause, or menopause. Or, I mean, there's all just, these changes. Yeah. You like know? Life, life is going to change you. That's why these bodies are temporary. You yeah, know, like exactly. God's going to give us perfect eternal ones at some point, but yeah. th these bodies are going to wear out. They're going to change. And, 
So we want to take care of them, but I think it's that sensitivity. And so like, I think, you know, we always say like, don't, don't get your wife a membership to a gym unless she has specifically asked you for that. <laughs> That is not going to go yeah. well. You will not yeah. have sex. Like you, there, there's not <laughs> right. Oh, for a look, bit. I got you a you know, treadmill. A killer, you know, <laughs> never asked for that, but happy Mother's Day. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and it's so it's like, and I think too, watch your comments because, and watch your eyes, especially if you're, if you know your spouse is in a vulnerable season. I mean, you checking out the hot neighbor isn't going to go well. And, mm. you know, we, we can't help what we notice, but we can help what we stare at. And so we have to be mindful to watch where our eyes go. And this is for women too. It's not just a, a male issue, but um, I think it's just really important to support each other. You know, years ago, I think it was after the birth of our second son, um, we had just moved and I had kept on weight for my first pregnancy, which they were pretty close together. And I really hadn't lost the weight, that weight gain that I received. And I won't even blame it on the pregnancy. I think I was just really having a good time hitting up Applebee's um, apps. You know, I don't know if you guys have Applebee's where you are, but like we were really yeah. Yeah. going to get some appetizers at Applebee's and I had just like not been very disciplined. And so I kept on weight from the first pregnancy, which went into the second pregnancy. And I just came to a point where I was really, I was really like, I need to do something, not just for looking better, but like for feeling better, like what you're talking about, Amy. I just felt, I just didn't feel, you know, energized. And I have these, you know, we have these two little boys now. I want to be there for them and be an energetic mom. And so I was, you know, Dave, you were talking through that with me, like, well, what does it look like? Do you want to go to a gym? Do you want to just walk more together? You know, what is it? And, and, and I was like, I really don't know. And I was like, but I'm going to just pray about it. And um, lo and behold, like literally a week later, this girl at, at church comes up to me and she said, Ashley, I heard through the grapevine that you're a dancer. Like you grew up dancing. She said, you may not know this, but our church has a dance team. And I was like, a church dance team. What's that? You know? And I'm like, <laughs> I'm in my twenties. Like, is this like a kid's dance team? Like what's going on? You know? And, um, and she goes, no, no, it's like a worship dance, you know? And it may sound weird to some people who've never seen that, but it was actually really beautiful. It was a small group. We all had dance backgrounds and from very, you know, to varying degrees. And we would pick a Christian song and we would, choreograph a dance to it and do it. And it was really beautiful. And so I went home and um, this is before I joined the team. And I, I, I was so excited, wasn't I? I was like, I prayed this prayer about God showing me what I need to do to get more physically fit. And this girl came up to me and told me this, but then in the same sentence, I said, but Dave, we have these two small children. We have busy lives. There's just no, there's not time. They practice on Tuesday nights. I mean, I, you know, I can't do that. And he looked at me and he was like, no, we will make this happen. I'll, I'll, you know, make sure the kids are good. You go for that two hours and spend that time and him giving me that space and opportunity to do that. It literally changed my life in that season because over time I lost the weight. And not only that, I felt strong and toned. And then the best part of it all was I made some of my best friends that I've had for the last two decades. Like oh. I, they are my best friends. So it was like, you know, relationally, mentally, physically, there was a healing that happened. And so I just think so many times we make excuses and we complicate it. And I would just encourage couples who are like, yeah, I want to do all these things that you're talking about, but I don't know where to start. I would say, pray about it. So many times we forget to pray and God will bring things to mind and opportunities that we didn't even know were possible. I mean, a church dance team was nowhere on my radar. Like I, that was nowhere, but it reignited my love of dance. And when you can find an activity that you love and you forget you're exercising, you've hit the ticket. So mm -hmm. like, I, I loved it so much. It was a wonderful season. That is so beautiful. I actually, um, so Tim and I were youth pastors and I oh, would cool. create, cause I, obviously it's in me. Um, I love movement. And so yeah. we would make worship dances and I love it. I, it's such incredible memories and the girls that are now adults, they remember those dances yeah. mm -hmm. and how special. That's great. Yeah. So That's so special. About five minutes left. I would love for you guys to share some practical tips with us that have helped you um, start a healthy life in those hard seasons maybe and how or how you do it now. Yeah. Sure. I think one of the simplest things we do is we, we try to go on walks together a lot. regularly mm -hmm. and you know, it can, it can be somewhere pretty that we drive to, or usually it's just right around our neighborhood and it's a great way to reconnect. It's a, we have some of our best conversations when we're in motion and next to each other and then it's just getting those steps in too, you know, mm -hmm. and our neighborhood has elevation changes and that helps. You know, we saw special about blue zones, the places in the world where people live the longest. And one of the things that those blue zones have in common is a lot of those places where people live have have 
a lot of walking and they have hills, they have elevation changes. So there's something about walking, you know, up well, and down. It's getting that heart rate up, like you yes. said, you know? No, and, and I, I, so that's yeah. encouraging to us that we all, let's take the stairs instead of the elevator. Yeah. Just exactly. Don't exactly. Don't take the elevator. Yeah. Just, it's so simple. Just yeah. take, the, take the steps. You do that a lot. He challenges well, me yeah, to do that. Little things like that. Like I could walk up two flights of steps or, or wait for an elevator, but just those little little decisions of like, this is going to get my heart rate up a little bit. This is better for me. Um, it's going to help. So it doesn't have to be super complicated. You don't have to become a CrossFit fanatic to, you know, overnight, you just take the stairs, go on a walk, <laughs> yeah. um, get more active than you are right now. You know, maybe get an Apple watch or something that's going to track your steps and keep track of that. I know. I love and it. I'll even remind it. you to stand up. Like, I already hey, saw your rings. Been... She's already, she's going on the rings already. Yeah. I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I know. It's like, I have yes. work to do. <laughs> get those rings fed. I need to give it. Today. So you just keep track. Cause sometimes we get in a routine where we don't realize, Hey, I haven't moved all day. Oh yeah. But just um, monitor He's, that. You're very good. I will say Dave and not in a pressure way. But like, if I'm like, you're, you'll notice yourself first and you'll be like, why am I feeling so like in a, a funky mood? And you're like, well, I haven't, I haven't hit the heavy weights today or I haven't run today, you know, or we haven't gone on a walk. And he'll remind me too. Like, I'll be like, gosh, I don't know why I feel so melancholy. And he's like, have you been outside today and walked, you know, cause he knows it's important to me too. And I will say just to reiterate, getting some kind of device to track, like tracking is motivating. I'm yes. also doing, I'm doing Noom right now. I don't know if you've heard of Noom. Mm -hmm. um, it's really cool. And I love it too. I'm, I'm in the counseling space and it's a cognitive behavioral approach to nutrition and weight loss and things like that. And I have really geeked. I mean, I'm kind of a nerd that way, but I've really geeked out on the science behind exercise and nutrition. And that's been really motivating to me. So I'm doing my watch, but I'm doing Noom and tracking my food and also learning about um, little sticking points that like, if you feel like you've hit a plateau, there's apps like Noom, there's My Fitness Pal, there's Weight Watchers. And you know, I've done Weight wa many years ago, I did Weight Watchers. It helped me tremendously, especially in that time. I was telling you when I joined the dance team and was trying to also watch my food intake and try to just be healthier. But I think that just using the tools around us, I would encourage people too to get someone like yourself, Amy, to join your your what you're doing online and to find someone who is an expert who can walk you through it. Because I think even sometimes technique, like we're not seeing the gains we want because we're doing the wrong technique. We don't have a, a, you know, a coach or a trainer who can show us how to do it. And then we need people like yourself. Well, thank you so much for that. Yes. And I, I love putting Jesus right at, at the center. Absolutely. 100%. Yes. So, yeah. I need to send you my workouts. I have over 300, lots of Pilates oh and God. lots of abs. And so oh, I love you can just it. do I love like it. a 10 minute workout in the evening or something with me. I yes. would love that too. Okay. Well, you guys, this conversation has been absolutely amazing. Um, we have one minute left. And so this is going to be a really fast prayer, but would you guys just say a really quick prayer absolutely. for our, our listeners? <clears throat> yes. Sure. Father, thanks so much for, for Amy and Tim and just for the light they are and uh, just for the fact you've let us all connect. And we are so grateful for that. Thank you for every person who's uh, listening to this. And I just uh, pray that you'd, you'd bless them, God. They've invested in their health in, in many ways just by taking the time to listen to this podcast. And so I pray they would take the next steps that all of us would and show us, God, the decisions we need to make to live at our best, to live at our healthiest in a way that honors you, uh, that builds up our marriages and helps us have the energy that you want us to have to do all the things you've created us to do. We love you and thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. amen. You guys, thank you so much. God bless you guys. And hey, Thanks, check friends. them out, the Naked Marriage Podcast, and go to the show notes for more info. Follow them on Instagram and other social media. Love you guys. Thank you so much. Oh, thank you so much. You guys are awesome. Bye, you guys. <laughs>